Coming up on Fox 4 Sports Watch, we preview the Cowboys' first preseason game of 2015. And we'll sit down with head coach of the North Texas Mean Green, Dan McCarney, as we look ahead to the 2015 season and the challenges that they have trying to get back to their winning ways from 2013. Fox 4 Sports Watch, here we go. You're listening to Fox 4 Sports with Edward Egras. Welcome to another installment of Fox 4 Sports Watch, your podcast for Fox 4 Sports. I am Edward Egras, your neighborhood weekend sportscaster. The Cowboys have their first preseason game of the season so to speak. It's against the Chargers out on the West Coast because it's easily accessible from Oxnard, California. There's not a whole lot of interesting things to talk about, so there, there, this may be a relatively short segment. We know that uh, a lot of the veterans and many starters are not going to be playing. It, you know, It's going to be a game-time decision for a lot of them, and this is to be expected with the way Jason Garrett runs this team with Tony Romo almost playing as little as possible because he should understand this offense by now. Uh, Des Bryant may not play much of any. Jason Witten may not play at all. So this this stuff is to be expected. And so this first game is really more about the backups and maybe even the backups of the backups to see what they're capable of doing. But at the same time, because of the loyalty and devotion to a lot of the veterans, there may be kind of moving and finagling to those positions where they're not there. They may or may not be uh, so many veterans. And so that's going to be one of the things to look at. Obviously the running back situation is something to think about because the, the three guys who are going to be replacing DeMarco Murray are all injured in some capacity. So that's going to be a huge question mark. Punt return, kick return will also be a big question mark. See if they can put something together. And as always, you want to make sure that everybody stays healthy for this contact game now last year was very interesting for the Cowboys preseason and that they finished 0 and 4 and everyone was sort of feeling like the sky was going to fall going chicken little on us and statistically that makes a lot of sense if you don't win any of your preseason games it usually means doom and gloom but there was an interesting statistic that came out I saw on Twitter a couple of weeks back or last week rather and that is there were two teams that went 0 and 4 in the preseason the Dallas Cowboys, and the Indianapolis Colts. Both of them finished in the final eight of the NFL playoffs. And so if you think about it, maybe this whole preseason means even less than what we've figured out historically because you can do so many things with starters. They're going to actually play the entire playbook. There are lots of things that the quarterbacks and other veteran guys already know that they don't need to be showing off any more than they already do. And there there may be some real validity to, you know, putting even less – on this preseason still that being said it's a grand opportunity for a lot of these backups to get some playing time and we'll see what they can do so let's move on now to the north texas mean green looking ahead to their 2015 season they're starting a little later than everybody else because their first game is one week later than everybody else so i had a chance to speak to head coach dan mccarney about the upcoming season and it's and particularly about expectations a lot of preseason pundits say that the mean green may finish uh, way down in conference usa may have about four to five victories and coach mccarney at the start of the week uh was very adamant in saying that these preseason predictions do not matter at all and when i spoke to him he was continuing to be consistent in terms of saying that preseason rankings don't matter very much so here is coach dan mccarney of the north texas mean green yeah i mean if we sit around and worry about what everybody else on the outside thinks of us on the inside we're going to probably waste time and we just can't afford to do that every minute every hour every day counts right now um but if you don't have this big old chip on your shoulder at north texas something's wrong with you And it's kind of been that way since I took the job. I got room for a nice size chip on my shoulder, and I'm good with that. Um, But we have a lot of good coaches in this program. We have a lot of good players in this program, and we're going to do everything we can to make people proud that support us. I think one of the – Yeah. I I think, you know, the prognostications, you know, whatever they mean at this point, I mean, a lot of it involves having just five home games and kind of having everything bunched together starting one week later. Do you notice those challenges, or do you feel like it's overblown? Yeah, no, I mean, there are a lot of challenges out there, Edward. There's no doubt about it. And uh, when you go 12 weeks in a row with no open week, only five home games, eight bowl-eligible teams on our schedule, uh, we can't come out here and have C practices, D practices. You better come out here with A and B plus practices each day. And uh, we, we rank, we prioritize, we rate, we grade, we do all those things, trying to bring out the best in each one of these guys. And we're all limited to 105 guys right now. And it's as wide open as it can be. The proving ground's right there on the practice field. So you want to play 
come give us everything that you got out here and show us that you belong. And we'd really like to have strength in numbers and play more guys this year so that morale's good, your depth is good, and then as you go through a long, hard, tough, challenging season, hopefully we can be successful. How are things looking at quarterback? Wide open right now, Andrew McNulty, no question, our starter. Um, Demarcus uh, Smith has come in and really done a good job. Um, Josh Greer having a good camp. Connor Means having a good camp. No question the depth and the competition and the performance through these early practices as a quarterback has sure been better than at any time last year. I want to ask you about DeMarcus a little bit more. This is a guy who's been to what seems like 18 different programs. Yeah. How do you talk to him just as a man and say, all right, clear out everything coming into this, have a fresh mind and have a fresh start here? Yeah, and I think that's exactly what we talked to him about, have a fresh start and have a good open mind and know that whatever's happened in the past has absolutely nothing to do with today. Make sure today's better than yesterday and hopefully tomorrow will be better than today. And that's all you need to worry about. We're going to give you a heck of an opportunity here. Nothing will be handed to you. You get what you earn. Um, you can't have excuses and results. So don't make any excuses. And he hasn't tried to make any of those because I'm not going to I'm not going to accept them. So let's go try and get results out here every day. And he's really done a good job of that. The heat is on. The competition's on. But Andrew McNulty right now today is our starter. Regardless of whatever happens at the quarterback position, you've got a center that I'm sure you're really proud of, right? Yeah, you know, what a great story. I mean, you come in as a walk-on. I've, I've awarded 32 scholarships in my four years at North Texas to walk-ons. Caden's one of them. And, um, you know, he's got some preseason uh, honors. He had some postseason last year. He's got two more years to play. The great thing is he's one of the best students on this campus, obviously on our football team, but not only on our football team, but on campus. And he just reeks a character, pride, selflessness, toughness, all those things that you want in a football player representing us here at North Texas. He's got them all. And it's a joy to come out here every day at practice and coach Caden Kirby. Defensively, not a lot of guys coming back. Uh, even even coaches are, are coming back. So, I mean, you've got a fresh start uh, almost all the way around there. What What's kind of the goal defensively that you want to try and establish early? Well, our plan to win is always, number one, play great defense. And uh, two years ago, we really were able to do that in our nine-win season. Last year, we dropped off some, still did some very positive things, still finished in the top half of Conference USA in just about every defensive category. So we've got a good, solid trend, tr tradition going here. But we need to be better. We need to get back to forcing more turnovers. I think we have more athletes on this defense this year. I think we have more speed. Now, we're not going to put you out there unless we trust you. So show us each day in practice that you belong on the field, that we can trust you, and then hopefully play more guys, strengthen numbers, a lot of guys on the field on defense, and swarm that football. And everything that's, uh, that, that I've ever been taught in the whole game of football starts with playing really, really good defense. And I know the offensive numbers around the world and around the country and around America and the state of Texas, still, I love and I recognize and I respect and really honor really good defenses. Bowl win from a couple of seasons ago. Are there still expectations around, or do you feel like that there's there's been enough time that's gone by to where you're looking to kind of rebuild all of a sudden? No, you know, the expectations are always going to be. We, we have changed the culture, and our, our academic success is, is off the charts. We've set every record here academically. we reset attendance records because of the support of our fans in this great stadium that we have out here. Lots of offensive and defensive and special teams records have been broken. That's great. But it's also in the past. And what have you done today? What have you done lately? What are you going to do on September 12th in our opener against a much improved SMU team? That's what we're getting ready for. But the expectations from me and our staff and our program for everyone associated with us, let's be successful. Let's win. Let's make people proud. And let's make 2015 a year to remember. Uh, last question I have, uh, and I know I kind of alluded to the schedule a little bit, but you play your second home game in October. That's that's a long time to kind of wait and then look at so many other things. I mean, what do you get kind of an antsiness, I guess, when it's when you're always on the road and always practicing? I guess? Well, you know, um, we can't change the schedule right now, and we've known about it for a long time, so we've really been getting ready for it. Uh, this will be the last time in 2015 we'll ever have less than six home games. This schedule was all done before I got here. Uh, but the neat thing is we do not have a losing record at home in Abogee Stadium since we opened this place, so we sure want to build on that and continue that tradition this year. And then you have to to have the focus and the toughness and the pride and the unity and the chemistry to be able to go on the road away from Denton, Texas 
of which we'll do that seven times this year and still win games. And that's the challenge, that's the opportunity, and that's what makes this uh, profession so much fun. Almost feels like a Cowboys and Oxnard. You, you play for a long time away from home, and then all of a sudden you get all these, uh, you know, fun times, uh, you know, back in your home place. You do, and you know, if you have a good football team, it really is fun to go on the road. If you don't, that's not a joy, that's not a, a trip to Disney World, but I'm going to tell you what, you got a good football team, and hopefully we're building that, no matter where we go this year, we're going to have an opportunity to win. Again, that's head coach uh, Dan McCartney from the North Texas Bean Green. The schedule that they have, and I alluded to this uh, in the interview, and uh, Coach McCarty, you know, validated that the, there are challenges to the schedule, but it's worth going over. First off, as I mentioned earlier, they're starting one week later than everybody else, and so because of that, they're going to play 12 straight games, maybe 13 straight games if they make the Conference USA Championship game, but they're not going to get a break at all during this entire stretch. Their break is essentially the first week of the college football season. So they're going to have 12, maybe 13 straight games that they have to play through, and that's got to be really grueling regardless of whatever league you're in. It's college football. It's going to be difficult. Something else, too, they have the three toughest teams that they have to play on the other side of the card. So they're in the West. The three toughest teams in the East will be part of their schedule, and they have to go on the road against two of those. They do get Western Kentucky at home, but that is a tough, tough task, to say the least. So you have that issue. And perhaps worst of all, they only get five home games. And to put that in perspective, as Coach McCartney did and as I did in the interview, the second home game is in October mid-October at that. So there's going to be a lot of road games to get started, and that may pose a lot of problems, and this team is going to have to gel very, very quickly. There are also some questions at quarterback. Can Andrew McNulty continue that momentum that he had from the end of last season, or will some of these other guys come in and challenge for that starting position? A lot of questions uh, concerning the mean green, but hey, Back in 2013, there were tons of questions and lots of low expectations for this program, and they wound up going 9-4, and four, winning the Heart of Dallas Bowl. So do not coach Dan McCarney out under any circumstances. And besides, you look at the more advanced analytics, you figure that this team could you know, surprise you in a couple of games. Now, will they make a bowl game? It's going to be very hard to say, and there are a lot of real question marks in a lot of different positions. Uh, especially defensively because you don't have a whole lot of guys coming back. But again, it's hard to co uh, count out this program, hard to count out Coach McCarney, and we can't see what we can't wait to see what happens with the main green. So that is it for this installment of Fox 4 Sports Watch. Thank you so much for listening. This is Edward Egross. Have a great day. On air, online, and totally mobile, this is Fox 4.